we will start off uh, as any uh, as any good caring liberal kind show would with puppies. Uh, we are uh, we're joined today at uh, young at the at the Young Turks uh, by uh, David Diane Fisher, who is aside from being an actor who you've probably seen many times on your television, uh, is now a, an author and a, and a um, an advocate for uh, for uh, on behalf of dogs, uh, puppies, and the like. Uh, David, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you, sir. Um, we uh, so let, let, I mean we've seen you. Let's let's sort of get your uh, your creds out here. Why you're uh, why you're sitting here? I don't know what mine are, but I, I know you're here uh, because um, you you've written this book. But uh, your your notoriety comes from having appeared on a lot of television here, uh, and and you are a regular now on uh, NCIS, a regular guest yeah. on uh, NCIS, which is a show that I know a lot of people watch. Uh, tell tell us about that. Tell us how you can be such a bad guy during the day or on at night uh, and then uh, by day you're a, you're a puppy loving guy it proves how good an actor I am That's no exactly. it's 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 and a lot fake english accent it's, works too yeah, it, does. Good, yeah, it does it and it's stuck after all these yeah, years that's pretty good. um it's it's a wonderful thing to play the bad guy always yeah. um you can ask any actor it's far more liberating every day we work in we work in a civilized world live in a civilized world being polite being yeah. civilized and we well, most of us hold down our our anger and our aggression and those who don't end up with the consequences of being in prison. Um, yeah. So it's it's very liberating yeah. um, to to be nasty. Yeah. To be evil. What's what's the worst character you play? What is the worst thing that a character played by David? Uh, David on Fisher on Twenty Four Season Five, I played a Russian character who was assassinating live on. I uh, I took a airport hostage and was assassinating people on the hour by the hour which we'd plugged course, into the Fox yeah. network and basically shooting people in the head. And it was pretty nasty. His yeah. whole character was very, very nasty. I was actually quite pleased when we finished the three weeks of shooting because being in his head was quite sick. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But very godlike. And well. do people who recognize you recognize you? I'm sure you got recognized from that show because it's got such a huge following. Uh, the, 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 it was episode two, three, and four, and they did a two hour, two hour start to the. Uh, right. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And people would actually scream obscenities at me. And really? I get, I get that a lot about um, the characters I play. People will. It's quite a compliment, but people. It's a say, compliment, but people are ridiculous. I mean, they, I know, you know, but it's <laughs> nice that they believe it. You know, yeah. they say negative things in in a good way, but it means that I sold them. On yeah, the no, no, that's yeah. true. No, yeah. no, it is. I, and listen, I, I agree with you, and I, and you could have sold them watching the show, but yeah. and I'm sure you've. I know you sold me on on 24. So. But I know that if I had seen you at the mall the next day, I would not have shouted obscenities at you because I knew you were doing your it, job. You, uh, it's, it's funny. You, you don't get approached, but you get recognized because of the characters you play. You're not right. a very approachable person in yeah. their eyes. So that's interesting. It's, yeah, they want it's to quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh, and how did this happen? Like, How did you get the bad guy gig? Uh, how did that, uh, you know... It just I have it start, I started working as an actor in England and I started working there as a bad guy um, always playing a lower class than I actually am so my, I changed my even my own accent for that um, and then here as soon as I came here I, for some reason I have that face I don't mind, I don't uh, mind no that's good all right and the hat you know I mean that's well uh, the hat kind of takes the uh, uh, yeah I got you yeah, with uh, the it softens, softens the blow I understand I understand well let's let's talk about the other side of David Diane mm -hmm. Fisher which is the one who uh, is uh, is a caring uh, advocate for uh, for our canine friends. What uh, is is this been your whole life? Have, have you? Been I've a been dog a huge owner? huge dog lover yeah. all my life. I've, uh, my first two dogs are my actual own dogs, other than family dogs I've had now for two and a half years. Yeah. And you know they changed my life. I rescued them, but they literally rescued me. I was in, I had it all. I was making national treasure. Twenty four. Just started NCIS. I was living the dream. I came to America for yet. I was miserable and drinking. And I got my dogs, and it changed everything. I, uh, they gave me a lot of happiness and a lot of reason. Really? Yeah. That's great. That's great. And they were both rescues? Yes, both rescues. Right. Tell us about what brought you to, to, to write the book. I mean, was it something you'd wanted to do for a while? Not okay. at all. Yeah. Okay. Not a total surprise. Yeah. Literally, I was out having dinner on a patio in a restaurant in Hollywood. Three girls in the dog park. One of them brought their dog. He was misbehaving. And I'm like, your dog needs to go to puppy school. Right. I just said it. Yeah. And that, those two words just hung in my head. And I was like, that's a good name for a movie or a book. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. That night, I went home and in a dream, lucid dream, I was actually awake 
watching this dream. Yeah. And in the middle of it, I was like, I, I've got to write this down. This is unbelievable. Yeah. It was like a movie. And then I was like, no, I want to know where it's going. It was so exciting. So I literally pressed play, watched it to the end of the dream. And in the morning, I just wrote it down. And there it was, the whole story. As the book is, it's 95% of the dream. Wow. You know, you know what my dream is? My dream is going to the dog park and then being able to go to lunch with three girls. Never happened. I go to the dog park, you know, three times a week. It's usually just me and my dog. Unfortunately, yeah. these girls are all just doggy friends. Then uh -huh. None of them are that way inclined. But I, I do okay. agree, every time I go to the dog park, I, I, I would like to come home with someone. Yeah. <laughs> Not just my dog. But anyway, so the, so the dream, so the, the, the book is actually 95% taken exactly. from, from yeah. the... Exactly. This, the... this is the story of a dream that became a reality. All right. Because that's exactly what happened. The, the, the book was a dream and I've turned it into a reality. But the story is also of a little mutt who had a dream to go to puppy school and his dream becomes a reality. Oh, that's fantastic. So, and it, who's the target audience for, for the book? Um, I think really kids from nine, it, depending on the child, if they know what the difference between a pedigree and a mutt is. Right. There is a slight, a small explanation at the beginning of the book. But from, I say from nine to 99 years old. Right. Kids and dog lovers, yeah. really. Okay. Does it make fun of the pedigree? Does it, is the pedigree dog uh, it's, um, maligned in your pages? No, it's it's funny actually. The pedigree is brought down to see its own truth at the end of the book. That's what I can say. There is a statement right at the end of the book which will change the world of pedigrees and mutts, and it is an actual truth. Oh, is that right? Okay. Oh, yes. And we can't reveal that. We have to get. Oh no, 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 no! Out. It's okay. literally the end of the book. It's all. It's and it, it came to me through watching a documentary on on wolves. It's quite incredible. Really. Mm. Uh, the book is, uh, is, is, um, is, is it the kind of project that you would want to do more of? Are these dogs characters that could go on to I have I have books? another idea for a dog story set in Hollywood. Uh, and they are it. hounded by the puppy Razzi, not the paparazzi. Uh, I and understand, they yeah. give their portographs, not their autographs. So that's, and right. there is a detective agency called The Dog's Nose Knows. This is in the making. Right. It's okay. very much a kind of Hollywood confidential. And then they go to pu prison, right? Isn't okay. Like all yeah, that? they okay. could. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just working <laughs> with you, kid. I'm working with you. Well, there is, there's uh, a, there is a kind of a prison in puppy school, and it's called Mutley Manor, and it's, uh, it's okay. for reject dogs. And, but that's what I'm saying. Is are are the, are the dogs that we get to know in puppy school? Are they going to go on to further adventures? Because uh, I that think the too, leads, you know. the characters, which are Bert and a monkey, I, I've already been asked by people for a sequel. And apparently, if you have a good popular book, that you should get the sequel out within a year or so. So yes, that's I'm working good. on that. But there there are there are other ideas for other books. That worked for the Police Academy guys. So it should <laughs> work for you. Uh, no, the, the book the book is called Puppy School. Uh, it is benefiting the uh, you. And the dogs, and but tell, tell Fifth, us about the, chari the charity. Uh, well, that it's, uh, the charity. Well, I'm working with IDF in defense of animals for okay. a launch party, um, but 50% of the income of the book um, will be going to dog rescue, dog pounds, yeah, and any any cause uh, to do with the the, the problems with dog with the, too many dogs on, uh, are being right. put down in this country. And what what is going on? I mean, just give, bring us up to date because you probably know more about it than, than we do. And you don't have to. I'm not holding your your, uh, your feet to the fire on this one. Do you? I'm guessing you know more than I do because I'm a big dog lover and a big pound guy and and all of that. Um, but. What's what's the state of the no kill shelter in America now, or in, certainly in California? I know it exists. I, it doesn't I, exist. I, uh, it, it's all dependent on on each individual place. I, yeah. I'm not too familiar. Yeah, with no, it. yeah, I wouldn't. I, I mean, this is what I want. One one of the things I'm passionate about is not having that, is yeah. having that taken away. You know, yeah. so I mean, sorry, having that established in, in all of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, but basically, you are a proponent of spaying and neutering. As, oh, uh, without a doubt, that's the, that's the problem. You know, yeah. I mean, and, and it's quite funny when I when I meet dog owners in the park, and I, I you know, their dog is not neutered. It's a male dog, and you you, you ask them why, and it, there's always this egotistic statement that yeah. follows it. You know, and it's the ignorance, which it's very very difficult without people getting in your face and literally. You know, right. using their ego to, to bash your argument down, and you don't, I don't want to get involved. But th yeah. that's the kind of thing you're coming up against. Yeah, and, and it seems that that it seems that that has softened. But I guess in some places, like everything else, it's hardened as well. So I mean, yeah. in, in, in its circles. So the book is called Puppy School. Uh, you can read about it. You can get it. I'm guessing at PuppySchoolTheBook.com. Uh, PuppySchoolTheBook.com has uh, links to Amazon.com, AtlasBooks.com, BarnesandNoble.com. 
And you can also go to your local independent bookseller, and if they don't have it, they can order it for you. It's called Puppy School. Uh, its author, David Diane Fisher, is here on the Turks. Where can we next see you when, if we turn on our television? Um, at the moment, I'm awaiting to come back to NCIS uh, as the Trent Court character. I know that I have... Uh, I'm supposed to be coming in this season, but other than that, there is, there, you know, there's. You're an author now. You're a writer. You well, don't have time I, for this. No, act I do. Stuff, I right? do. That's more fun than anything. It's, <laughs> it's great. So, I'm sure yeah. that it is. I All mean, right. Well, it was great to meet you. Thanks for being on the Young Turks again. It's puppyschoolthebook.com. David Diane Fisher.